Simon Gompert. Meanwhile, changes in how we are shopping are continuing to have an impact. As many as 14 shops a day are closing on UK high streets as retailers face their toughest trading climate in five years. A report by the accountancy firm PwC found fashion and electrical stores had suffered the most as customers choose to shop more online. Nearly 2,700 shops closed in the first half of the year. I'm joined now by Andrew Teacher, an independent retail expert who joins me here in the studio. Morning to you, Andrew. I'm sure, you know, all of us here, our viewers, you know, in our local high streets, we notice shops that have closed recently. But when you put a hard figure on it, you know, as many as... As, as 14 a week, that is quite striking, isn't it? it? These are pretty shocking numbers from PwC. And I mean, to, to some extent, this is an ongoing trend we've been seeing for the last 10 years. The, the rise of online shopping has, has collided. It would have collided initially with the great financial crisis, but also just, just shifting trends in how we live our daily lives. A lot more focus on, on eating out, spiked a number of, of, of dining chains that have, that have come up. And those are now declining as we now look at more in-house dining through apps like Deliveroo and Uber Eats. And I think what we're seeing through, through some of the challenges of the big retailers is that you know, the, the good ones have evolved. They, they've created models that, that look at multi-channel shopping where you can buy online, collect in-store and, and, and mash up all the different channels of shopping. But outdated businesses have really struggled. And just look, you know, looking at, at some of the stuff that, that came out on, on Marks & Spencer earlier in the week, they, they, these guys are struggling because they have not evolved and they've not evolved their supply chains mm. and not evolved the way that they, they market their businesses or, or, or indeed the, the kind of products that they sell to people. Let's come back to that in a minute. There was an interesting interview I heard earlier this morning with the managing director of Iceland, and he was talking about you know, overly taxed bricks and mortar retailers vis-a-vis -vis online retailers. And he, he, um, I made a note of what he said. He was talking about an outdated tax mechanism that unduly impacts those bricks and mortar retailers. Would you agree on him with him? Or do you think there isn't a level playing field here? Uh, there isn't. He's, he's correct. And what he means by that is that the business rates that one pays on a retail shop, so an, obviously Iceland's have a lot of retail presence, uh, they will pay more business rates, which is the, the government's commercial property tax. They'll pay more business rates on a high street shop than on a warehouse in the middle of the Midlands, for example, because the value of that property is more. And, and the point that the Iceland chief is making is that they can't compete because the, the tax per, per equivalent space of, of property for an Iceland versus an online retailer is a lot more. And, and the reality is that that tax, that, that, you know, that, that total disconnect between the, the tax take of, uh, of the government from retailers versus warehouse distributors has not been something they'd be willing to face up to, despite constant, uh, constant and repeated uh, declarations that the government would look at radically overhauling business rates. Mm, well, and, and we saw it in budget last week, and you know, when I spoke to the BBC a week ago, what I said was that the, uh, the government's that, you know, they've been leaking all of this stuff around overhauling business rates and giving a, a, a lifeline to small businesses. And all they did was cut rates for, for a few small properties. So it's basically bailed out public toilets and ATMs. And, it, it, and until we see some kind of rebalancing of this, mm. um, you know, we're not going to see much, much progress. Well, with as many as, and I must correct myself, I said 14 shops a week earlier, it's 14 shops a day. You know, is More the than government... More 2,500 Yeah, year. yeah, it's, it's an incredible figure. You know, if we are not to see a drastic change to our local high streets and, and communities, the impact on jobs, etc., you know, is the government going to step up and do more? Because presumably, I don't know, maybe you would disagree, there's only so far that the retailers themselves can go in terms of offering the sorts of experiences in store that you can't get online. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the reality is that online shopping has changed the way that it's changed the psychology of shopping. You know, nowadays you go online if you want an umbrella or you want a pair of shoes, you kind of know what you want, maybe, or you've researched it and you go and find the best price. And people are adapting that and doing that in the high street, which means that you know, they can't compete because of the, the cost issue. But, but equally, um, I, I think, you know, the public has kind of got to take their own responsibility. It's easy to blame the government for, for its failure and it has failed to update business rates, but equally from the government's perspective, you've got an electorate that says we want more money in the NHS. So what does the government do? It raises £28 billion from business rates annually. It's mm. an easy tax to raise. And the decision that the government policymakers have to make is, well, what do we want? What does the public want? Does it want hospitals or high streets? And ultimately, if, if what the public wants is to have uh, high streets, then it needs to support them. And that means maybe shopping locally. It means maybe being 
prepared to pay a bit more money for products to support local businesses. Um, but equally, I, I think companies need to evolve. They need to look at the, the successful businesses that have responded well. And, and, and ultimately, I, I think it's mm. also about companies just being run a bit better. Frankly, uh, it's easy to blame landlords. People will always say, oh, the landlords are hiking up the rent and they'll blame uh, everybody else but themselves. But what we've seen through some of these massive department store failures in recent times is, is you know, the, re the reason why companies like Debenhams, House of Fraser have got these really onerous uh, lease contracts that where they've got, you know, decades and decades of, of, of contracts on, on shops is because previous owners okay. of those businesses have extracted heaps of cash. And, and they've done it and they got off scot-free. And I think until we address some of these fundamental issues, nothing is going to change. Andrew, uh, very interesting to talk to you. Andrew Teacher, independent retail expert. Thank you very much.